Hello, it's Tuesday Tips Live from Digital DJ Tips, and today we're looking at how you can record your DJ sets if your record button is grayed out on your software or it won't work. And the reason this is happening is because you're trying to use a streaming service like Tidal, SoundCloud Go Plus, Beatport Link or BeatSource Link. So you will learn how to do that. I'm gonna show you two ways. One of them costs nothing and it's really simple. Another one might cost you a bit of money, it might not, but it'll get you a low more features as well that even people recording normal DJ sets don't get. Now this is a recording of a live show and that means that you get a chance to take part, whether you're watching live or whether you're indeed watching the recording. Because if you're watching live, you can join us at the end when we're gonna have a any questions and you get a chance to ask anything you want. But if you're watching the recording, then you can watch all those questions and then a lot of the things you're thinking might be answered. But also, if you're watching the recording, you can ask questions underneath and we'll get to you there as well. If you're with us live, Facebook is the best place because we can see your questions immediately, whether we get to answer them or not immediately, and then they'll get answered by the team underneath the video. But wherever you're watching, Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, we will get to you, we will try and help you and welcome. Uh, the only thing I would say is if you're brand new to this, then you ought to be a member of Digital DJ Tips. Gets you loads of benefits, it gets you a free copy of our book, our gear guide, but more importantly, our weekly emails helping you become a better DJ. DigitalDJTips.com slash join is how you can become a member. So without further ado then, let's get into talking about what we are here to do today. Uh, and look, it's a big issue. You're DJing away and you are really enjoying your set. Uh, you're using a streaming service and you think, you know what, I'm gonna hit record on my DJ software. I wanna record this, this is gonna be fun. Uh, and so you head over to your DJ software, there's all our comments, look at all you lot chatting away already. You head over to your DJ software uh, and you go to hit record and you get a message. Now you probably can't see this, you might be able to. It says at the bottom, eject streaming tracks from decks to start recording. You get this bar at the bottom, this, this warning bar, and however much I hit that record button in the middle of the screen there, it won't let me record what's going on on these decks. This is Serato, but it's gonna be the same whatever software you're using. If you have a streaming service enabled, I'm using Tidal here. These are songs that I've taken from a Tidal playlist. Now, as soon as I take those songs off the decks, the record button works just fine. You see it's recording now, uh, but it won't now let me load streaming service songs onto the decks. It says stop recording before loading streaming tracks. So it's an either or that you've got going on there. And it's annoying because why shouldn't you be able to record your DJ set? So it's an important thing to be able to do. You know, one of the things we teach here at Digital DJ Tips to our students is that there's only one person in the world that can't hear your DJing, how it actually is while you're doing it, and that's you, because you're so busy doing it, you're not hearing it how it really is. The mixes you think work well might be boring people, and the mixes you think are great might be a little bit not so good. You just don't really know. You need to listen back to your sets to hear what went on. And it's a bit restrictive when your software is stopping you. Now, of course, there's a reason for this. The reason is that the DJ software companies have got deals with, with well, not Spotify, because they're not anymore in these systems, but with Tidal, SoundCloud, Beatport, BeatSource, which says, and those deals knock onto the record companies, of course, which says, you know, when you're streaming music, you can't record it. So that's why there's no record button in Spotify, right? Makes sense. But in DJing, it stops making sense. So today we're gonna to look at how you can fix that. And there's two ways of fixing it. The first way only works if you're using a controller, but if you are using a controller, it's the cheapest way, it's easy, shouldn't take you too long to set it up. Uh, I say it's the cheapest way, it's absolutely free. The second way, uses some of the extra gear we've got dotted around here. I'll explain that in a minute. So therefore it's not free unless you already own audio interfaces or recording devices. Again, I'll get onto that, but it gives you some advantages over doing it the first way. So let's talk about the first way then, which is free. So the first way is we're going to record on our laptop because the technical reason why this works is your laptop is connected to your DJ gear by means of a USB cable. And this is a computer cable, it's not an audio cable, it's a computer cable. So the audio interface inside your DJ controller, the one that's giving you the audio outputs and the headphones outputs, 
is effectively part of the computer. It's an extension of the computer. So that means the audio is actually inside the computer. And if you think about it, of course it is. How can your software record non uh, streaming tracks. There's a non-streaming track. That's just one of my tracks loaded up there. I can hit record. I can play that and it's recording that. How could it do that? Because that audio is going on in the audio interface that's in here, which is seen as part of the computer by the computer. So what that means is that if you had a device, and by device I mean a piece of software, on your computer that was able to record that isn't your DJ software, then that piece of recording software won't have the limitation because it doesn't know what you're recording. It doesn't know if it's a streaming service or whatever. It will just record if you tell it to. Now all computers have that built in. Macs have got QuickTime. I'm not sure what the Windows recording piece of software is, but the first big takeaway I'm going to give you here, if you haven't got this, you can thank me later for it, is that you should go and get a piece of software called Audacity. So Audacity is free. It is at uh, audacityteam.org. Uh, and when you get Audacity and download it, you will find you have a piece of recording software like this with a big record button at the top. And then you can set at the top of the software what you want to record. And then you hit record here, hit the big red record button, and then you just start DJing. And it's going to record what you're doing. It doesn't care whether it's a streaming service or not. When you're finished, you go back to the software, you hit the stop button, you click save, and there you go. You've got a recording of your DJ set. And this software is also very good for editing and tidying up and making louder and doing anything else you want to do to your DJ set as well. So do go and get Audacity if you don't have it. Uh, you can equally use QuickTime. I've got QuickTime. All Mac users have got QuickTime. It's this little, this little uh, piece of software here. It opens this window here. Again, you can select what you want to record. Now, there is a slight problem here. If you look on my screen now, if you can uh, see this, pinch and zoom to see it, it will give me my microphone to record when I click record, which you, you will always see on a laptop. Now, normally, you won't see anything else there. Now, this DJ controller I've got here is unusual in that this DJ controller is actually visible in the software. You can see it says NS4FX, which is great. I can click that, hit record, and it should work. You don't often get that with DJ controllers. So in other words, there's no way to select the DJ controller that you want to record. And of course, this is going to be a problem because if you can't select the DJ controller, you can't record your set. You certainly don't want to use the microphone to record your set because it will sound terrible. So how do we get around that? So this is the trick. This is the little thing. And even if you're not technical, there's nothing to worry about here. It's easy to do. What we want to get to is the point where we can see in the software. So if you look here at the top, in fact, let's switch back to Audacity. It'll be a little bit easier to see. So if I click to the record, part of Audacity, it's giving me the microphone, but it's also giving me the NS4FX, which is what we want. It's, in other words, it's saying, do you want to record your DJ controller? And it's also got this thing here that says all DJ software. So let's imagine you can't see your DJ controller, because as I say, that's unusual. How do you get this DJ software one? How do you get to select what your DJ software is doing? So that's what we're going to talk about now. It's possible to do that without any extra software if you know a little bit about your operating system, but it's a bit fiddly. What you need to do is almost rewire internally your laptop to tell it, look, we've got this music playing on my DJ controller. Can you send that music to something else, like maybe a recording device, so that I can see it and record it? And the way we do that is by using a virtual cable, which is basically a piece of software that does that routing inside the laptop for you. So there's one piece of software that I'm going to recommend to you because basically it's the same piece of software. It works on everything and it's free. Uh, it's called VB Wire and you get it, sorry, VB Cable it's called, and you get it on the VB Audio Software website. Uh, you can find the website at vb-audio.com. Com. This is completely free. It works for Windows and Mac. Download it, install it, and set it up, and it will give you the input that you need to your recording software from your DJ controller, really simply. If you're a Mac user, I'll just show you the one we use because it's really quite nice, and it visually demonstrates what is going on here a little bit better. This is called Loopback. It's a piece of paid software, but it does the same thing. And so you can see what I've set up here. I've actually set up all my DJ software, DJ Pro AI, Rekordbox, Serato, Tractor, Virtual DJ, all the pieces of software we use when we're teaching. And I've told it to wire them all into an output channel. And this output channel is called DJ Software. So if I change the name of the output channel to DJ Apps, and now we go back to Audacity, 
you'll see that here, this now actually hasn't said it, hasn't changed to DJ apps yet there, but it will change to DJ apps when this refreshes. So the good thing about this is I can actually quit this software. That's gone now. Uh, it's not running anymore. Uh, and that will still be showing inside my recording software. So once you've set it up, it will still be there, uh, which is really cool. So go and get VB Cable. And again, you can get VB Cable from this website, vb-audio.com. Set it up and that will give you the input you need to hit record on QuickTime or whatever piece of recording software you want to use to record your DJ sets. It's absolutely free. Uh, and it's the simplest way to get your DJ controller. You have to be using a DJ controller uh, because otherwise you haven't got that USB cable feeding the audio into your computer. So it's not gonna work as easily if you're using you know, record decks and an old fashioned mixer or whatever. This is a digital way, but most of us are using DJ controllers, right? So no problem there. All right then, so what's the second way? And why would you want a second way? Well, you, as I say, maybe you're not using a controller, but there's a few reasons why you might want a second way. And the second way is a little bit more old fashioned, but still a couple of tricks to teach you here. And this is basically using extra gear to record your DJ set. That, to, rem to remind you why we're doing this, we're talking about if you've got a DJ set that you're playing and you're using streaming services, Tidal, SoundCloud, Go Plus, Beatport link, beat source link, and it doesn't let you do it. The DJ software won't let you do it. It'd be grayed out, so you can't record this because that's the way the licenses work. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna use an extra piece of hardware. Now, there's a couple of ways of doing this. The first way is to use something like one of these. Now, this is a hardware recorder. It looks a bit like a dictaphone of old, right? And indeed it is. It's the kind of thing businessmen use to record meetings. But this has got an input. This is a Tascam DR05. Uh, it's a classic. I've had this for, I don't know, 10 years. Uh, there's also uh, one of the very popular ones is a Zoom H1N. But they're basically little recorders that record onto an SD card. Uh, and then you plug this directly into the output of your DJ controller. So, there's a couple of things you need here. To start with, you need more than one output on your controller. Now this one, thankfully, has got more than one output. My main speakers are here, and I've also got a second output here. So you do need a second output or a way of turning your one output into more than one output in order to be able to record on one of these. So that's the first hurdle you're gonna jump through if you haven't got these two things. And then the one that you're gonna plug into your control, your recording device, you need to leave the volume set the same. So this has got two volume controls here, right? I've got one for my main output and one for my booth output, and this is plugged into the booth output. So once we've got the volume levels right on our recording device plugged into the booth output, we're not gonna change them. We're gonna set the output there and leave it. And this is the one we're gonna use for adjusting the volume in the room, right? Because if we change that one up and down, the recording level will go up and down. So plug that in, hit record on here, take the SD card out of here when you're finished, plug it into your computer or via an adapter, uh, and then take the file off. Again, you can put it into something like Audacity to tidy it up. There you go, you've recorded your DJ set on a piece of hardware. If you've got that extra output, that's the same with both of these things we're about to talk about. Right. What if you haven't got one of those? Another thing you might have knocking around or another solution you might prefer is to use an audio interface. An audio interface is actually the same as the thing that's built into a controller. That's all that is. It's an audio interface. It's something which turns your audio from digital into analog or the other way around. So what we want to do is take the output of our controller the audio output that we could plug into some speakers and turn it back into a computer signal so that we can then record it on our phone, a laptop, an iPad, whatever. And the way we do this is by using, as I say, an audio interface. Now there's several types of audio interface out there. You might be familiar with this type. This is just like a musician's audio interface. This is a Roland one, but Focusrite have the Scarlet series. These are uh, MIDI interfaces as well, but they're also audio. So musicians or DJs plug their gear, their instruments, their mixers, their samplers, whatever, into one of these. And on the back of it is a computer output. You plug that into your recording device, whether again, that's a phone with a recording app or a tablet or laptop or whatever, right? Musicians, audio interfaces. But there are DJ ones as well. So this is a DJ audio interface. This one is by Evermix. It's called the Evermix Box 4. Uh, and this plugs in again via a normal cable from a spare output on your DJ mixer 
into this unit and the other end has got a cable that plugs into a computer or in this case your phone it's got a lightning or USB-C uh, and you'll plug that into as I say your phone or maybe into um, a computer and that will record directly to a recording out there. Same thing, it's an audio interface, they're just two different types. And there's lots and lots of different types. There's like, this is a posh one, this is from um, IK Multimedia, it's called the Quattro, it's got loads of inputs and stuff. But essentially, anything that can get that output from your DJ controller, uh, digitized and sent off to whatever you want to record on, will do the job if you're going to use a recording um, audio interface, or interface like this. Another way of doing it, and this is quite cool if you're DJing in a club, is that the mixer quite often will have a USB socket to plug in a computer or an iPad or whatever to record on. This is a Tractor Control Z2 or Z2. This has got the all important around the back there. USB input, output, both actually. Uh, so you plug a cable in there, plug it into your recording device and you can record what's going on on the mixer via there and the Pioneer mixers and stuff all have the same on the back of it. So it might just be that the mixer you're using has already got an audio interface in it and with a bit of setup you can just plug into that and record via that. Another reason you might want to do this by the way is if you have extra equipment. So here on this little Newmark setup here I've got a Novation Circuit Tracks. So I'm going to tell you something really cool about this at the end today by the way. I've got a Innovation circuit tracks, you'll definitely want to hang around for that. Now this is plugged in via an audio cable to an input on here and then in the case of this, again this is unusual, that actually is sent through to the computer so you could record directly on the computer without needing an extra audio interface or recording device but normally on cheaper controllers that's not the case. You can sometimes plug an auxiliary in but the only place it comes out is the audio output, not the USB. So if you've got extra equipment, or if you're playing in a club with other DJs plugged into the club's mixer, um, not just you with your computer, then, and you wanna record MCs and instrumentalists and other DJs and stuff, record the whole night, then it's easier to plug in a recording device. And of course that gets around the streaming issue as well. So we've covered two ways to record your DJ sets if the streaming service that you're using is blocking the record button in your software or indeed on your hardware because the Den and DJ and the Newmark standalone all-in-one units also have the record button on them which will be greyed out if you're using a streaming service. The first way is just to use, if you're using a controller, a recording app on your laptop and to rewire the internals of the laptop so that you can see your controller as a recording input using VB cable is a free piece of software that'll do it or something like loop back if you're a Mac user which is a more elegant way but it achieves the same thing and the second way we looked at especially if you've got extra equipment you're DJing with other people or you're not using a controller at all is to use either a hardware recording device this is a DRM a DR05 from Tascam but you could use a Zoom N1 for instance uh, H1N rather sorry um, or a audio interface, again, plugged into a spare output and recording, making sure that your spare output is not affected by the main volume control you're using. So we've got the booth and the master output here, which is perfect for that. And recording it, taking that off the card on the recording interface, or um, uh, simply just taking the file when it's finished, hitting save, and there you go, your DJ set is recorded. So if you're watching this on the recording, you now have all the information you need and you can turn off. But hey, if you found it useful, do come and join Digital DJ Tips for a lot more useful stuff to help you become a better DJ. You get the free book and the free gear guide when you do. But also hang around because in just a couple of minutes, we're gonna go live to the audience and we're gonna get questions, get comments, get feedback on this subject. And it might just be that something that you are wondering about that I haven't covered will be talked about then. Before we do though, before we do that, I want to do something quite special because we have today a giveaway. One of the bits of gear you see here is a prize that I'm going to offer you the chance to win for free now. So could it be my iPhone? No. Could it be the uh, wonderful IK Multimedia Quattro IO interface? No. Could it be the Tascam DR05? No, that's bloody 10 years old. Could it be a copy of my book? We can have that for free by joining Digital DJ Tips. So no. In fact, it's this. This is the Novation Circuit Tracks Groove Box. It's awesome. And I'm not telling you that because Novation have paid me to tell you that. I'm telling you that because I use this in my home studio and have done for a number of months. This little battery powered unit 
is two synthesizers, is a two MIDI controller sequencer, external MIDI, MIDI controller, you can plug two extra MIDI devices in and sequence those with it, and a drum machine with four track drum machine. The whole lot can be sequenced, it's got built in mixer, built in effects. In other words, you're getting a sampler, synthesizers, sequencer, effects, mixer, all in one little box that you can take anywhere. It's an awesome amount of fun. And we've got two of them to give away. Whether you plug it into your DJ gear to add extra beats and samples, it would work great in that respect, or whether you sit down and start making music at home on it, using it as a groove box to get your ideas sketched out or even finish whole songs on it. The Novation Circuit Tracks is a great hot piece of gear right now. So if you would like to win one of these, it's very, very simple. Here is what you do. You head over to the Digital DJ Tips website and you look for Giveaway, win Novation Circuit Tracks Groove Boxes. And you click on it. And this will give you a link that you can click to enter the prize draw. Now, this is only valid until the 31st of May, 2022. So if you are watching a recording of this after that date, you've missed the chance to win this, but do subscribe to Digital DJ Tips for more chances to win our, our competitions. We'll let you know how to do that. The link is on the screen now. So two Novation Circuit Tracks groove boxes to give away. Can't say fairer than that. And now for the rest of our Tuesday tips, here live from the Digital DJ Tip Studio, it's all about you as we go over to your comments, queries, questions, uh, and general chat, which is my favorite bit of these whole things. So hello to everyone joining us. Hi to all our regulars, GM, Gems, Mixmaster G, Eddie, Charlie Casanova, Paul, DJ Nigel, Scott Thompson, uh, Eddie, Adam, uh, John Brock in Dublin where it's raining, hi to Jermaine and Charles who said, I was just thinking it's Tuesday. Uh, it's Digital DJ Tips broadcast day, it is indeed. Uh, and uh, we're ready to go. So questions, comments. So the first one is from Max on Twitch. Hello, Max, who says the iRig stream to record your sets is awesome. That's very similar to this. This is a bigger version of it. Uh, this is the iRig. Quattro IO, but they've got a whole range, IK Multimedia, these little devices that are very easy to plug in and record your sets with. So thank you for sharing that with us. Max, uh, hi to Jack in Texas, hi to Ingi, always nice to see you. Um, blocked recording is part of the license, says a few of you, including Mixmaster G, that is indeed correct. Jack says, I use an external recorder, like a Tascam DR4, 40. This is a, a smaller one, a Tascam DR05, but yes, these are uh, one of the ways that we're talking about. Thank you for sharing that. Melanie Audacity does indeed work well. Uh, Digital Nation points out that if you're a Mac user, you can use GarageBand as well, which is a bit similar to Audacity uh, in order to record your DJ sets, uh, which comes free with every Mac, although you also have QuickTime, which will record even simpler than using GarageBand or Audacity if you're a Mac user. Uh, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, um, Roberts uh, in nice and summit, sunny Netherlands. You Dutch people are always telling us what the weather's like there. Uh, Robert says, I fell asleep lounging in the sun, which caused me to miss the first 10 minutes. So in all seriousness, if you are joining us late, you can watch the replay on Facebook and on YouTube, where we've been talking today about how to record your DJ sets, even if your pesky software stops you being able to do it. Uh, Black Hole is another piece of software. Thank you, I've been trying to remember the name of that one for a while. Uh, that was shared by Digital Nation. Yes, you could look at Black Hole as well, which is similar to VB Cable that we've been talking about here today. Um, and uh, Nizar, I just use an iRig and record with my phone. Yeah, recording with your phone is a really good idea if you've got an audio interface that plugs straight into it. You can just use the built-in recording app, the voice recorder app, but there's other apps as well that help you not only record, but sometimes save your uh, save your sets as well and share them, which is great because it means that you can do the whole lot in one app. So that's cool. Lots of you mentioning Soundflower, which a lot of these more pretty apps are based on for Mac users. Again, it's just internal routing of your audio. Um, this has been very informative, says someone on Facebook, and to the point. Uh, thank you, Phil. Well done. We do try our hardest, so um, thank you for that. Sorry, your name didn't come through because you'll be in our Global DJ Network group and the names don't come through here. Uh, I use the booth output of my DDJ1000 into a Tascam DR05, so very, very similar to what we've been talking about here, says Nick. Um, Mixmaster G says, another bonus of using a virtual cable software is you can record straight into MP3. Most DJ software will record to WAV because it's the least CPU intensive, but it eats disk space. So there's a good 
uh, a good little extra tip there, something I hadn't thought of, so thank you for sharing that. Uh, Mark says the uh, XDJ-XZ, so this is the Pioneer DJ uh, standalone unit, um, it records great, but it labels all the files the first of the first 2019 of, uh, in other words, the first of January three years ago, no matter when they were recorded, so I didn't know that. Uh, but anyway, thank you for sharing that with us. Um, on the DJMS9 and DJMS11, says Philip, you can attenuate the record out data stream from the USB jacks using the set settings utility. It's under the mixer output. Let's talk about that for a second, actually. Let's just pull a pro DJ mixer out. And for the sake of it, seeing you're talking about it, let's pull out the DJMS7. So on a pro DJ mixer, you get a pretty cool little thing. On a pro DJ mixer, uh, you get not only the record output, and I'm just checking now. Oh, typical, this one hasn't got it. Um, let me pull up, let me grab the Pioneer DJ um, standard mixer, if you like, the one that you see in every DJ booth all over the world, uh, which I know for a fact does have this. Uh, this is a DJM 900 Nexus 2. You can't get more standard than a 900 Nexus 2, right? So on the back of this, on your outputs, you have a record output, and it's down here. One of these outputs here is a record output. And this, is even better than using the booth output or the master output to record. Because the booth output and the master output, I'm gonna put this back now because I'm tidy. The booth output and the master output have got volume controls. So you could accidentally turn one of those volume controls, but the record output on Pro Mixers hasn't. There's no volume control for it. So the only volume controls that are gonna affect the record output are your gains and your channel faders and your cross fader, of course. So the record output is the safest place to record from if you have one built into your equipment. Most people don't, but thank you for sharing that. Um, you don't like my music, says so streaming, and we're talking SoundCloud, Tidal, Beatport link, Beatsource link, but of course, away from the DJ world, Spotify, Apple Music, Pandora, and so on. It's great for music fans, but terrible for artists. Last month, I made a whopping $9 from streaming. It's a big debate, isn't it? The way that streaming has changed the musical environment out there for musicians. Uh, DJ Ginormous, don't forget to smash that like button, folks. Let's show Phil some love. Oh, thank you very much, DJ Ginormous. Look, I want you to help yourselves more than that. I, you can subscribe to the channels, you can like, you can follow. I'd love that, it's great. What I really want you to do is join Digital DJ Tips, not only to get the cop a copy of our book, the bestseller on how to DJ, and the gear guide, which is being updated at the moment, actually, but more importantly, to get the Tuesday Tips emails every week, which give you New stuff, free stuff, tutorials, mixes, free lessons from our courses, stuff to get better in your DJing. So I really want you to join the list. So do that, digitaldjtips.com slash join. Uh, so more comments then about our topic today, which is how to record your DJ sets when that pesky record button is grayed out when it won't work on your software. Um, is there a way to sync your groove box? Obviously, we're now, we're now talking about what I've set up and I can't really blame you for talking about what I've set up because, hey, I started talking about it. Is there a way to sync that to Serato or Virtual DJ? In other words, to have it so that when you slow down the BPM here, it slows down on here. Uh, there probably is if you're a MIDI genius, but I wouldn't know how to do that. You need to use probably Ableton Link or something and have an interface to work with this. No, I would say. However, this unit here uh, has got a tempo setting. So it's really quite cool the way it works. You uh, click tempo there. And it's got a tempo, so it says 62, 6, 2, which is pretty cool, isn't it? Uh, and then you can alter the tempo there by turning the knob. I can't remember which knob it is now that you turn one of these, that one there, you see? So the tempo is now up to 80 and down to 20 on this particular topic. I've got this, I've got this set to a very, uh, a very slow BPM, 76. You see, it's just using the pads because there's no screen on this. Um, so you can change the tempo on this. And as long as you hit the start buttons at the same time, which is exactly what I do when I'm using it, and then nudge the DJ, it will never slip out once you've got the tempos the same on two things. But no, I don't think it has got a way of, uh, an easy way, a non-technical way, in other words, that I would understand uh, to do that. But uh, we digress a little bit. Um, so Naked HD uh, is, uh, is offering a lot of sexual favors in the comments on YouTube, uh, but you know what? Naked HD is not gonna deliver those sexual favors to you. You're gonna be taken to a site that puts something dirty on your computer. Don't click their link. Um, I want to uh, 
This is a very well structured and very informative video, says someone on Facebook. I actually learned quite a lot. Few helpful tips. Oh, thank you very much for that. Uh, team, please stop that spammer. Uh, Louis says, this is all good, uh, but where, oh, I love it. You see, I, I don't like to not read these out because, you know, you, you, you dig, a, dig a hole for yourself when you, when you post stuff like this. So Louis Conception, that's all good, but when you do a video with turntables and records, let me know, please. So two things, Louis. The first thing I'm going to let you know uh, is if you look at the name of the website, it's called Digital DJ Tips. So there's a tip there in that we cover digital DJing. And the second thing is, just to set your expectations, Louis, I won't be letting you know when we next do something on turntables. Right, let's move on with some more comments. Uh, this one is, um, Craig um, says, is there, oh no, please another thing. In fact, it's a good time for me to point this one out in the nicest possible way. Keep calm, which our friend with the, uh, with the uh, you're not talking about turntables, it's not real DJing, uh, wasn't keeping calm. Uh, keep calm and ask once. Please don't cut and paste your question over and over again. If I see it twice, I will not read it out, even if I see it 100 times. So just ask your question once. We'll get to you as soon as we can, if we can. And if we can't, my team will get to you in the comments, especially if you're on Facebook, where we can see your comments easily underneath. Um, so that's the way it works here. Um, J Dab records into Logic from Serato. So yeah, Logic works fine as well. Um, Ableton works fine. Anything that you can hit record and record an external source will work absolutely fine as well. Um, right, one or two more comments then before we give it a um, we give it a rest for today. Although do join me again on Thursday, 3 p.m. London, 10 a.m. Eastern for our any questions session. Uh, this one is from uh, Coimseal or Coimseal. Question re the iRig, and this is an iRig. Um, it fits my old Samsung S8 phone, but not the S20s. It has different input ports. Um, so you can get leads that plug into these that have a different lead on the end, like a USB-C, a lightning cable, etc. So you just need to get in touch with them and see if they can sell you the extra lead or tell you where to get one. And the second thing you said is, do these audio interfaces record? No, you have to plug them into something that can record. So thank you for that question, Coim Sile. Um, which all-in-one decks let you record, says, uh, Mr. Dubs, all of them do. I think they all do anyway. You just plug in uh, an extra USB in some of them if they've got two slots or others will let you do it on the, on the one USB or SD you've got plugged in and there's a little record button you can hit and it'll record directly to that. Uh, but they won't let you do it if you've engaged a streaming service. So like the Den and DJ ones, the uh, Newmark Mixstream Pro, they've got the ability to stream. They've got a streaming built in, which is great. You can, you know, you can put in your Tidal or Beatport, login, whatever, and you can use them to stream with them. It's brilliant. But as soon as you do that, you can't hit record. So you're still going to need to do something along the lines of what we said here. In that instance, you'll definitely be using a recording device, hardware recorder, uh, an audio interface, or something like that to get your recording done. Because of course, uh, they don't use a laptop, so you can't just hit record in your laptop. Ain't going to work in that instance. Right, one or two final um, questions. Uh, the uh, this is from TL in Philly, who's been using SoundForge. Long time since I've heard that name to record your sets for 12 years or more. Uh, Jacob, I have a Focusrite 2i2, which is very similar to this, uh, but Audacity isn't picking up the audio from it. It should be, try launching Audacity after you've plugged this in. It won't usually see audio interfaces you plug in or turn on after you've turned the software on. So just try changing the order and it ought to be able to see your Audacity there. Uh, Stevie says, I used to record on a tape deck, me too, uh, then on a mini disc player, me too, uh, with a line out at the back of my mixer. Uh, very old school, yes, but it works, right? Um, I've got a story for it. Let's end on a story. Uh, I've got a story for you. I once was asked by Ministry of Sound to submit a DJ mix to play on Ministry of Sound radio, which was a big deal back then, probably still be a big deal now. And I only had a tape deck. I didn't have a mini disc player. Back then they wanted a DAT. Remember DATs? Um, digital audio tape? They wanted a DAT. Um, so you have to send them a DAT tape of your DJ mix so that they would play it on the radio. You know, you couldn't just send them a cassette. That wouldn't be enough. Uh, so what did I do? Well, I didn't have a DAT player to start with. So I, <laughs> I bought the best quality tape cassette I could. I was so careful, cleaned all my records, got my levels right. And I made a very high quality recording on a cassette um, using all the 
Dolby C noise reduction and stuff. And then I took my cassette player to a, a friend who had a studio and plugged it into his DAT player, bought a blank DAT, recorded it on the DAT, sent it to Ministry of Sound, and they syndicated that for a long time, not knowing that it had actually come off a cassette in the first place. So there we go. Recording DJ sets, it's something that goes back a long, long way. I'm going to stop now, people, but just to let you know uh, one more time that you can win one of these. It is a Circuit Tracks from Novation. It's an awesome little piece of kit uh, and we've got two to give away um, courtesy of our friends at Novation who have kindly donated them as a prize. Uh, it's easy to enter. Head to the Digital DJ Tips website, find the article that says Giveaway Win Novation Circuit Tracks Groove Boxes. It's at digitaldjtips.com by the way. Uh, scroll down, click the How to Enter link and it'll take you to this page here and you can enter for free to win one of these two groove boxes there. And if you're watching this after the 20, 31st of May, 2022, unfortunately you've missed your chance, but to know about future competitions, join Digital DJ Tips. There's the link, digitaldjtips.com slash join. We're back next week with another Tuesday Tips Live. I'm back on Thursday with our Any Questions session, again, live here from the studio. But meanwhile, from me, Phil, and everyone here at Digital DJ Tips, the world's leading DJ school, Get good, get out there and make the moments and we'll see you again very soon.